Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please leave me a comment down below as to what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurtzgazat video called Let's Travel to the Most Extreme Place in the Universe. I think it involves subatomic particles and quantum foam. Let's check it out. The universe is pretty big and very strange. Hundreds of billions of galaxies with sextillions of stars and planets, and in the middle of it all, there's Earth with you and us. But as enormous as the universe seems looking up, it seems to get even larger when you start looking down. You are towering over worlds within worlds within worlds, each in plain sight and yet hidden from your experience. Let's go on a journey. We'll start in a park about a thousand meters long, enough for a 15 minute walk. Every time we click this magic button, we'll become a thousand times smaller. Please slip into this magic... Oh, that is really cool. <laughs> ...and suit so you don't die and can still see. Ready? Let's go. The Miniature Realm. You are the size of a grain of sand just two millimeters high, standing on a blade of grass that seems as tall as an eight-story building to you. A square meter of lawn is now a dense metropolitan area with 100,000 blades or two Manhattans worth of grass towers. From your new tiny perspective, the park that you could quickly stroll through before is now the size of France. Crossing it would take at least a week. Human sized. I always love this scaling order of magnitude type stuff. It's an important engineering fundamental. Loom over you, four times taller than the Empire State Building their steps falling from horizon to horizon. <laughs> a bee the size of a helicopter lands near you, making the ground shake as its hairy carapace vibrates with each wing beat. You try to escape, but are barely able to move because the air is so gooey. Before you click the button, air resistance was barely noticeable, but as you're now a thousand times smaller, it's as if the air has become a thousand times denser. It feels like you're moving through honey. Flying insects like bees use this to their advantage. Yes, we're getting into the whole square cube law and maximizing your surface area. Okay. Their wings are not made for gliding, but like paddles that row through the air. Scaled up to human size, the bee would outrun a Concorde jet, except it couldn't even take off because it would be too heavy for its wings. The microscopic realm. You've entered the microscopic realm and are now less than two micrometers tall, about the size of an E. coli bacteria. From your new tiny perspective, the park you started in is now a million kilometers wide to you. If you walked non-stop, it would take some 25 years to cross it. It's hard to grasp just how huge the microscopic world is to its tiny inhabitants. The giant bee that was close a moment ago is now the size of Mount Everest, towering high into the sky, but alive humming and vibrating. The air here feels almost solid to you. On the human scale, it would be as viscous as lava, extremely hard to push through. The blade of grass now expands- Assuming this magical suit here also prevents you from dying <laughs> from all this craziness. <laughs> so far, you can't see its edges, stretching as wide as Paris would to a regular sized human. You see valleys that look like dried up riverbeds, dead patches like deserts, and giant craters left behind by voracious aphids. But if you look closely, this is not terrain. These are rows of individual cells, each the size of a house with hard exteriors like glass shells. Every few cells, there are huge openings called stomata, like mouths sucking in air and blowing out oxygen. Suddenly, the gigantic bee begins to move. This is beautifully done, and I love how they make the comparisons between real-world items and these things that are normally tiny, like the size of cells. It's fascinating. A construct made of rigid pieces that slide against each other like a suit of armor. 
it takes off to escape a drop of water the size of an asteroid that fell from another blade of grass and is now rushing at you at breathtaking speeds. You brace for impact, but instead of feeling a strong punch, you just get sucked in. You try to swim, but the water feels thick and sticky and holds onto your limbs like glue. Air molecules are free spirits, while water molecules act more like social creatures that group together whenever possible. They pull on each other and create a relatively strong cohesive force that traps you. You can't help it, but you're still moving, tumbling in all directions, helplessly dragged along by an invisible current. Floating in this miniature lake are tens of thousands of microorganisms. They take on many forms, viruses, the sun. I love that they get into how challenging it would be to move or even control where you're going in this scenario. So many of these size comparisons don't really take in that into account on what it would be like to have your same human proportions but shrunk down so small. Of tennis balls float around you aimlessly, others like Euglena oxyura cells pass you like freight trains. But most look like oily jellyfish the size of a car, sporting long tentacles that act like supercharged propellers. Despite the water holding onto them like glue, some move hundreds of body lengths per second, equivalent to a person shoveling through mud at over 600 kilometers an hour. However, bacteria weigh so little and water is so viscous that they basically have no inertia. There is no gliding on this scale. The result is a weird jerky motion that's hard to keep track of. Maybe we can learn more about this strange motion if we go even deeper. The Molecule Realm. You've become the size of a molecule, just under two nanometers wide. At your new tiny scale, the droplet now seems as big as the moon to a regular human. The blade of grass it rests on could reach from the tip of Alaska to the end of Australia, and the park is now almost the size of the solar system. But instead of mostly empty space, it is... F Love how they do this for each level. This is brilliantly done. ...with stuff. Everywhere you look, there are innumerable amounts of molecules and atoms. The rigid walls of the grass cells beneath you are clearly vibrating, rippling with waves of energy. The water droplet contains nearly a sextillion water molecules that are all in motion. Water is actually a storm of H2O molecules smashing into each other hundreds of trillions of times a second. <laughs> each of them is moving at speeds of around 2,300 kilometers an hour and bombard their surroundings mercilessly, sending small objects hurtling in all directions. This is the source of the invisible current that you noticed when you were a thousand times larger. Scaling this speed up to the human scale is impossible, as a human-sized molecule would be 2,000 times faster than the speed of light. All this furious motion comes from heat. Heat is a bit abstract at our human scale, where you touch. Another thing they don't get into is what happens to all of the molecules and all the cells in your body when you shrink them? They're now smaller than what would even make sense at this point. <laughs> something and get a vague sense of whether it's hot or cold. But down here, you really feel what heat is. The motion of molecules, vibrating, twisting and colliding as if they're inside a furious ball pit. When these molecules lose heat, they move more slowly and collide less often. When they gain heat, they speed up and smash together with renewed fervor. Temperature is basically the measure- I'm gonna have to use that renewed fervor in conversation. <laughs> the average speed of these fantastic dancers performing all day. Suddenly, a molecule hits you especially hard, and you're catapulted out of the water droplet into the air again. And here, you see something unexpected. The stuff between the air molecules. Nothing. Between the molecules that make up the air, there is a vacuum. On average, a molecule in the air travels for about 60 nanometers, which is about the length of a hockey rink if it were the size of a human. If we were to compress all the molecules and atoms buzzing around in the room you're watching this in, they would only fill about 0.1% of its volume. 99.9% .9 of the space around you is a vacuum. You just don't notice it. Which also means that every time you take a breath, you breathe in mostly... I knew that stat already, but it's still fascinating just to visualize that and to comprehend that, that everything you're touching, you're really not touching. <laughs> Nothing with a few atoms. The subatomic realm. At your size of under two picometers, scale starts to lose its meaning. 
A human would be nearly 2 billion kilometers tall relative to you, so large they could stretch their arms from the Sun to Saturn. An atomic nucleus would be the size of a grain of sand you could hold on the tip of your finger. That grain holds 99.97% of the atom's mass. The rest, a sphere of influence about as large as the Eiffel Tower from your perspective, is filled with an electron cloud. That's basically all the places where electrons might be at any given moment in time. Elec I love the scale of atoms. Well, one other um, frame of reference that I heard was an atomic nucleus is in a baseball field a mosquito on second base. <laughs> ...are shapeshifters that morph around outside a nucleus, creating a new and vibrating mess of different shapes with every new moment. Unlike the graceful motion of planets, the atomic nuclei are chaotic blurs. They bulge, roll, quiver, and breathe. They hold back the same energy that powers nuclear bombs, and it doesn't let them sit still. They twist and vibrate six stillions of times a second. It's time to end our journey and return to... Anything that small is entirely um, measured in terms of probability of where they might be, where they might think they're going. Um, anything involving nuclear reactions is all in a measure of uh, probability. But things with a very, fairly low chance of happening, but you're basically playing your game of craps many, many times per second. And that's how you see things happen, like uh, nuclear power plants producing electricity. What are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> the smallest place. We have reached the bottom, the border between reality and unreality. The scale here is the Planck length, which is the distance light travels in a Planck time. Planck time is the time it takes light to travel a Planck length. Hmm, okay. None of our models of the universe make sense at scales smaller than this, so for now, this is it. We think that down here, particles bubble into existence and then spontaneously disappear, creating a quantum foam of unimaginable energy. Can we go even smaller? We don't know. It's time to return. If you look up, the universe is large and strange. So incredibly large and strange. But if you look down into the tiny and extremely tiny, the universe seems even larger and even stranger. In the end, the perfect place might be where you are right now. Not too big, not too small. These hidden worlds are all part of our 12,023 human era calendar. This time, you can join us on a journey through the microcosm. With each turn of the page, you will reveal a new world you didn't know existed right beneath your feet. You know the drill by now. As always, it's a super high quality calendar, very shiny and only available for a short time. We also have a few special deals for you in our shop. That's cool. Um, yeah, I've, I, well, first off, I did look up that the whole 12,023, that was based on a rough estimate that humanity has existed for about that long in terms of their first permanent settlement of like the first city that was ever built. So that's kind of a cool concept. Let's just tack 10,000 years onto the current year and that's about right. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I could tell in just seeing the way this was animated that a lot of it came from um, these little, these posters, these calendars, all these things that they used to do. And you'll recall in, a, in another Kurzgesagt video that um, they explained that this is how, um, how they started out before they uh, made it to YouTube. I, I just think that's awesome. I was kind of wanting them to go the other way now to say, let's instead of making you a thousand times small, now let's go the other way and make you a thousand times bigger so you can become the size of a galaxy <laughs> or something and keep going up and up. But that was really cool. I'm uh, fascinated by all kinds of like order of magnitude scaling and it was really fun to watch. Let me know what you think of that down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.